What's going on, everybody? It is January 10th, Wednesday slate. We've got 11 games, which is awesome. Weird value in some places and a lot of balanced lines, so I'm anxious to get into this. Uh, last night shook out pretty well. Um, I can't, I don't have any complaints. Let's just dive into it because this is the, you know, this is the big night of fantasy for the week. First game up. Hornets and Mavs, uh, Hornets, six and a half point favorites at home. They have the fifth highest implied total. Uh, I showed this off in the live stream last night, but I've consolidated my view so that everything is sort of on one page. So we've got schedule, we've got the rank of four factors. Um, so I can sort of see if I should take a closer look at anybody standard stats that we looked at before, and then I moved the cleaning the glass stuff onto uh, the same sheet. So it's all one big picture. Short list is here as well. And then the daily breakdowns, if I need to look at recent history. So first up is Hornets. And right off the bat, I don't like much of anything. Um, not a lot of good prices out there for the Hornets. Kaminsky is really the only person that has any interest to me. 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. How's he been playing? Um, solid minutes, but... Not really the best performance. Oh, well, that, you know, I was looking at the wrong lines. Um, you know, two straight 30-point games in the end of December. They have not played much recently. I have this date filter on. Yeah, they have not played a lot recently compared to some other teams. It's good, I guess, from a rest perspective, but I guess I'm okay with having a little bit of Kaminsky. And you'll see... Whatever team that I have highlighted, so like in this case it's Charlotte, it's going to highlight the guy in uh, anybody on that team in the uh, shortlist. So I'm fine with Kaminsky. He's probably, yeah, he's probably a four for me on FanDuel. And a three for me on DK. Nope, that's not even remotely close to his name. There we go. So there's one. Other than that, I don't really... Like, I wouldn't want Kemba. Um, particularly on FanDuel. That's a terrible price. He's fine, I guess, on DK. I do like the matchup. Um, not a lot of defense for Dallas at point guard, but... They don't really get to the line all that often, which you would think would be beneficial. They do as a team, but no one individually. Um, so I, I'm good. I don't really have any interest in any of these guys. Let's go to Dallas now. I only have Charlotte and Dallas loaded up from the cleaning the glass stuff, so I'll grab that every time, but we'll see. Dallas, 101.5, implied total is 18th. Um, I mean, better, I guess, but not a lot out there. Um, not a bad matchup for Wes Matthews. I'm fine there. He's fine. Nothing jumping out. It's not a game I'm going to have a ton of. Um, I'm fine with having a little bit of Dirk. But that's probably it. I can't... I don't, I don't really see anybody else that looks like an amazing play. Dirk benefits the most from like a defensive standpoint. 
Yeah, I'm good. Those are the only two guys that I would want any part of. It's just not a very good game. We'll go to the next one. Uh, Pacers and Heat. I don't believe this is a real line. I've got the Pacers favored by... F you know what? Actually, it is a real line. Pacers favored by four and a half. I have Miles Turner out. Um, he is listed as doubtful right now. And I also have James Johnson out um, with the assumption that he'll be suspended for tonight for throwing a punch at Ibaka last night. Okay, so 105.75 implied total looks pretty good. That's 10th. Um, I don't really want any part of Oladipo on FanDuel. That's not the best price. Although, I think it would be interesting to see how Oladipo has played when Miles Turner is off the floor. And since there's been, you know, Turner missed a lot of games with, um, was it a concussion? There's going to be a decent sample of time on and off, so it's worth looking at right now to see if anybody deserves a bump. Okay, so that's pasted in. Right now, so long as Sabonis is is able to play, if Turner is out, you almost have to fire up Sabonis. He'll be owned in a lot. Oladipo, Oladipo actually worse with Turner off the court. No one dramatically better outside of Sabonis. Sabonis has been a lot better um, when Turner is not on the floor. That doesn't surprise me. Um, and then Corey Joseph, oddly enough, has been a, a bit better without Turner on the court. Not anything that's going to change anything for me. I don't like or dislike anybody any more than that. So Victor Oladipo to me is uh, a DK3. Um, Sabonis. He's 5,900 on FanDuel, <clears throat> 6,400 on DK. So you need him to get to like 36 or so to be happy. 33 in the last one in 24 minutes. You know, he's been mid-20s or higher in most of his games. And that's without the minutes bump that he would get if Turner <clears throat> can't play. Um, on FanDuel, I think he's a straight one. Again, this is all assuming Turner doesn't play. And on DK, I think he's a two. I'm going to do something and try and get these tiers uh, posted to the website at some point in time so that I could have less questions of who do you like more, so-and-so or so-and-so. Uh, Bojan, he's okay. I don't like the matchup for him, but it's not the worst. Danovich. He's probably a three. And I don't really see anything else of interest on the team. <clears throat> if you want to get really weird about it, you can take a look at TJ Leaf at DK or FanDuel, both minimum salary. But I, you're, that's a you know deep GPP play. Other than that, I think I'm good. I don't see anybody else that, like, jumps off the page. Yeah, all the way to the bottom. Okay. Uh, we'll go to the Heat next. Heat on the back-to-back. 101.25 implied total. As I said, I don't expect James Johnson to play. Um, and right now, they barely have a rotation. This is going to be, there won't be a shoot around, so we won't get news until late. It's going to be one of those things that we're going to want to pay really close attention to because their news will be the most important news that comes out in a way. Implied total is 19.5, so you don't want to get too crazy with it, but there's a lot of value out there. Um, so let's just start listing people off. 
Wayne Ellington looks really good. He's probably a two on both sites. It's a good, uh, it's a good matchup. Price is good. You know, shots are going to be there. Uh, he should have the opportunity to provide some value. What did he finish with last night? He had 26 and a half fantasy points last night. Um, obviously, pretty good. Uh, we want to take a look at Josh Richardson. I mean, everybody's sort of in play in a, in a different way, but Richardson is a FanDuel 2, probably a DraftKings 4 for me. Price is really not awful, or really awful on DK. 6,300 on DraftKings, 5,600 on FanDuel. I, I, he's a he's an exceptional play on FanDuel, but you got to avoid it on DK. Stinker last night, what he finished with? 23 fantasy points. Um, he was getting up shots, just couldn't hit him. So, you know, the opportunities were there. Drogic, uh, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. He's a three for me. In a bet, like if they weren't playing the Pacers, if they were playing the Suns or something, a bad example for Drogic. I don't, I don't mean it from like a narrative standpoint, but the Pacers are good enough that it's hard. You don't want to stack up too many guys when they're shorthanded like this on a back to back. Kelly Olynyk, how many minutes did he play? Twenty two. Yeah, they just went to Bam last night. He, obviously, Bam had fifty three fantasy points. Twenty and. 15, 15, and 5 or something crazy. Um, assuming Olenek gets more minutes than that just because of the short rotation and no James Johnson, um, he's also in play. I'd say much more in play on DK, 5,900. I'd say he's a, he's a 3 on DK. You know what, he's probably just a straight 3. Tyler Johnson I have in, assuming he plays. Um, this is even more ridiculous. You know, if he doesn't play, assume that you get minutes from... Uh... Hey, where is... Why is he not showing up there? Oh, Jones is showing up. I just couldn't see it. Uh, assume Jones gets a lot more run if Tyler Johnson can't play. Um, but Tyler Johnson is probably, you know, a three for me. And then we have Whiteside. He's 7,600 on FanDuel, which is still probably low. 6,800 on DK. So he's a DK one for me, oddly enough. Um, and that particularly if, if, uh, if Miles Turner can't play, I don't, I don't see the Pacers having anything to deal with Whiteside. Could be in for a pretty good game. <clears throat> um, but yeah, Whiteside at 6,800 is really, really difficult to avoid. And then I think it's fine having a piece of BAM. Don't expect everything that happened last night to happen again. Uh, but 3,700 on FanDuel, 3,800 on DK. He's a three for me. I know that's a lot of uh, heat, guys. Outside of having a bundle of white side, it'll probably just be a sprinkle of the rest of those guys. It's just not the best matchup. Well, although on FanDuel, you know, you could have a lot of Josh Richardson and Wayne Ellington, and I wouldn't think it was crazy. They're well coached. I don't mind having short rotations on teams of, with teams that have uh, good coaching. It's when the games get like really ugly and it's you know, I don't know insert shitty team here. Go to the Wiz now. Wizards hosting the Jazz, uh, seven point favorites at home. Um, I don't think anything will just jump off the page unless somebody had like a major price change. Yeah, I don't think so. So Beal, oh, that's incorrect information. What 
What is going on there? Why is that coming up as 28? Long mid rank for Utah. Why is that wrong? Oh, no, it's not wrong. It is just oddly pasted in there. Okay. Good to know. Beal is 8,700. I don't necessarily see anything I'd need there. Um, Wall is 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. So I like Wall a lot. He's a FanDuel 4 for me, but he's a DK 2. I'll have a lot of John Wall, I think. Not a lot, but, you know, a solid amount. Josh Wall. I'm trying to give him a better name. Otto Porter, um, a little dinged up. I don't see it in that matchup. Markeith's price is pretty much where it's supposed to be. Gortat's price is pretty much where it's supposed to be. You could run Gortat out there on FanDuel if you want, but that wouldn't be my spot. So I think I'm going to head to Utah now. Utah, 99-point implied total. Dead last on the night. Not going to be a ton here, I would imagine. Oh, I'm tired. Already out of coffee. One sip left. All right. So Donovan Mitchell looks great. He's 7,200 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DraftKings. That's one I'm definitely interested in. Uh, he's probably a two, to be perfectly honest. That's a great price. You know, he's gunning. I see no reason why that wouldn't be a good spot for him. Let's make sure I'm not totally crazy. I don't think I am. Favors, six thousand on FanDuel, sixty-three hundred on DK. Let's see. Can, what is, he needs 30 to hit 5x on FanDuel. He's been right around there the whole time. Feels really, really safe. Um, he's probably a FanDuel 3 for me. I wouldn't touch him on DK. Um, I don't need any of Ingles or Hood. And then Rubio on FanDuel is 4,800. Um... So you need him to get to like 25. I think that's a really good spot for Rubio. Still just a th three for me. You don't want a ton of him, but uh, it's a good price. Off to Brooklyn now. Nets hosting the Pistons. Uh, 101 implied total for the Nets. 21st. Um, this one's going to be ugly. Uh, no Allen Crab, no Damari Carroll. So, barring any major price changes because of that info, uh, some of these guys might look really good. Yeah. So Joe Harris is four thousand on Fanduel, forty-four hundred on DK. You need him to get to like twenty-five. Hit 21 in the last one in 37 minutes. Um, basically, you're banking on Joe Harris getting hot. Uh, I like him, but I don't like him so much that like I want to build around him. He's not that sort of player. You need him to shoot the lights out. And in a game with that low of an implied total, as best I could tell, that's probably the lowest overall total. Um, I don't want to get too crazy with the guys that rely solely on points. Now, Dinwiddie, on the other hand, 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Um, he's going to have to initiate. Uh, it's not like Ish Smith is some defensive wizard, although I guess he'd probably... They'd probably put Avery Bradley on Dinwiddie, but 
I don't really care. Um, he's probably a three for me as well. I don't want to overreact to the, this game just because of how bad it is. Karis Levert, uh, another person I'm going to be a little interested in. He is 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Um, couldn't get the shot to fall in the last one. Still was able to get to 17 fantasy points. Uh, previously to missing those two games, though, he had been mid-30s or higher. Um, his price should probably be a little bit higher on DK. Uh, he's a three for me on FanDuel. And unless I'm totally crazy, which, you know, I could be. I'm going to love him big time. Me love him long time on DK. He's a two. The price is just crazy. He's 5,400. That's that's bonkers. Um, honestly, he might even be a two on FanDuel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wrong there. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, I think you can get to on DK, but he's a uh, low on the totem pole guy for me. And then um, I'm well. Detroit gives is one of the worst teams against corner threes, which is pretty much the only thing that Quincy AC does. So I'm fine with taking a GPP flyer on Quincy AC. He looks even better on DK for the extra half point, just in case he starts bombing. But hit 21 in the last one. Uh, if he gets the big minutes, it'll be interesting. I only have him at 24 minutes, so there's some up. There is potential upside there if he uh, if he gets a little extra run. You know, I'm this is like. Guys that I have in tier four are probably like one lineup guys, maybe two. So we're good there. Those prices are just tasty. All right, to the Pistons, 103 implied total, tied for 16th. That is um, not good, <laughs> but could be worse. They could be the Nets. Alrighty. Whew. Man, if some of these prices were better, the Pistons would look amazing. So Drummond is... 9,300 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. I like him, but not all that much. So he's a three for me. Um, I don't want Tobias Harris. <sighs> Avery Bradley's all right. Uh, yeah, Avery Bradley's okay on FanDuel. I don't want him on DK, but he's probably just a four. Only guy I'd want to look at right now would be Ish, because of how much he lives in the mid-range. Brooklyn just gets eaten alive in the mid-range. Um, Ish is 6,600 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Uh, he's a... I probably wouldn't even take him on FanDuel, but on DK... He's probably a three. How's he been playing? 27 fantasy points in the last one. Um, since Reggie went down, he's had 29, 24, 22, 32, 27, ooh, and 39. Could be a decent game. Um, if he can get himself into the into the mid-range, you know, and some of those shots start falling, it could look good. Other than that, I'm good on that team. There's just not a lot of value in their prices. 
So let's go to New York now. Uh, the Knicks hosting the Bulls. Knicks 106.75 implied total, which would be seventh. Some of these games are just super ugly. There's a time where watching the Knicks and Bulls would be like, I don't know, fun. Not so much now. All right. Oh, here comes me like Zinger again. Can't get rid of it. Porzingis, 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. That price gap on Porzingis is crazy. He had 41 in the last game. You need him to get to like 50 on DK for something good. I'm going to hope that having some rest and two days off will be uh, beneficial for him. Porzingios, yeah, he's the he's now Greek. Um, on DK, he's a two for me. He that price is just crazy for someone of his ilk. A, did they play like recently? I, I feel like I always remember these games when they were like four days ago. No, they didn't. It was back by Christmas. Um. I don't feel the same way about him on FanDuel. He's a four. The price is too high. Uh, Courtney Lee, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. Um, I can dig it on DK. I wouldn't play him at all on FanDuel, but on DK, he's probably a three for me. Jarrett Jack, 4,500. On FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. How's he been doing? Two stinkers, a couple 20s and 30s. It's a decent range. You know, if he can get to 25, that's a pretty big night for him. Although, lives in the mid-range. Chicago, pretty nasty there. Um, I like him, but I'm going to have to mute it a little bit. I think he's going to pop up a lot, but I'll <clears throat> have to limit him. Last sip, guys. Pray for me. I could just pause this video, come back with a fresh cup of coffee, and you guys would be none the wiser. But it's all the way downstairs. I need to train the dog to get it. Sort of like that penguin that can like walk and get groceries. Uh, keep an eye on Beasley. If he's out, we'll want to take a look at like Cantor and Thomas or O'Quinn, but see where those minutes go. But for right now, I'm good on everything else. Next up is the Bulls. Uh, 101.25 implied total. Tied for 19th. What's the best game? What do I want to watch tonight? Seven o'clock games. I would love to watch the Wizards and Jazz if Gobert was playing. I guess the uh, Hornets Mavs, which is a dreadful game in my opinion. Seven thirty games. I don't want to watch. I guess Rockets Blazers could be fun at eight. Wolves Thunder, and then Warriors Clippers will be two hours after I'm asleep. Got the hiccups. Not off to the best start. <sighs> okay. Bulls, bulls, bulls. Man, the bulls are bad on offense. All right. Ah, there's some value out there. Uh, I'm assuming Miritich plays for right now. Um, no reason to think that he doesn't, but if we get news, that will obviously change. Knicks can give up the threes, so Justin Holiday come on down. I wish that implied total was a little bit higher, but 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. He needs 30 
you know, had a couple 30-point games in the past two weeks. Um, this is as good a spot as any for him. Uh, he's a th FanDuel 3, though, for me. He's a DK 2. That might be a little aggressive, but I just... They just give up so many threes, and he just shoots so many threes. 54% of his shots. I mean, him, Markin, and Denzel Valentine, Miritich, they all just bomb threes. All four of them. Chris Dunn, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Um, I've been on him a lot lately. I've been on him on nights where he's been good as well. Uh, his most recent game, 47 fantasy points. I was pumped. I had him on the 55.9 fantasy night. Um just because of the way he plays, like it, uh, I feel like I've got a good beat on him right now. It's rare. <laughs> it's rare. But uh, tonight's not a Chris Dunn night for me. Uh, Markinen is 5,900 on both sites. So, you know, we need him to get to 36 to have, like, a monster, um, you know, multiple mid-30s games in the past couple weeks. He can get to 40. He's going to have the opportunity to shoot. So I'm plenty cool with that. Um, If that game total were higher... Ah, uh, man. Where's everybody else at on him? I need to calibrate my mind. No, I think I just need to go a little heavier on him. He's like a two and a half for me, just because of the total. Uh, Denzel Valentine, forty seven hundred on one on Fanduel, forty eight hundred on DK. Um, like I said, I like the matchup. I don't necessarily love Denzel Valentine. You need him to get to thirty, which he did in the last game. Um, but he's very boom bust. I'd say he's a three for me. And then Miritich, uh, man, he concerns me. But 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. He's okay. He's probably a four for me. It, no, that's silly. It's, it's a decent matchup. Um, I'll have a solid chunk of Justin Holiday. And more likely a trickle of Markin and Valentine Meritage. I don't really have a feel for who's... Like, someone will be hot out of that group. Someone will be cold out of that group. And I don't think that there's any clear indication of which direction that would go. Off to Houston now. Rockets hosting the Blazers. I have the Rockets favored by eight. Um, that might be aggressive. I'm assuming Dame plays as well, so I'm going to pull a point off of that. Because I know this line isn't real. But either way, this should be a uh, an entertaining up and down game. Rockets, 110.5 would be fourth if that line that I just made held. So we've got Ariza looks not the best. Rockets are a really weird matchup for the Blazers because the Blazers really take away the three. Um... I don't think I'm going to want a ton of Trevor Ariza here. Just because of the game, he sort of always needs to be on the radar. But that's a four for me. Eric Gordon's price to me is too high. 7,100 on FanDuel. 7,200 on DK. I mean, you're looking for 40 out of him. Did it in the last one. He's had two 40 plus games in his past eight other than that it's been not the best um i'm going to ignore eric gordon now chris paul um 10-3 on fanduel 9-7 on dk what's chris paul's history look like against the blazers
good earlier this year. It's just been solid-ish, but that price is, whew, that's a biggie. I think it could be a game where Chris Paul really gets himself into the mid-range, issues some of those threes. I like it. I don't like it a lot, but I like it a little bit. I wouldn't mind having Chris Paul in a lineup or two. Um, main guy I want to look at for this game, at least on DK, would be Clint Capella. He's 7,700 on FanDuel. He's 6,800 on DK, so we would like 40 out of him if possible. Um, you know, had it in the last one, really hasn't been as efficient as he was to start the year. Let's see where all my compatriots are at. Yeah, I'm good. Uh... I think he's a three for me. And then Gerald Green, uh, he's a FanDuel only for me. 4,500 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. Uh, but it's, I think it's fine to have a piece of him. He's just, it's basically as bad of a matchup as you can get for him, the way that they defend the three ball. He might take a lot of really ugly threes. That's probably it for me. To Portland we go. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm assuming Lillard plays if that isn't the case. I don't know, swap him out for Napier. We know how to do this dance at this point. Uh, who's it going to be? So, hmm. I guess it's more of a Dame game than a CJ game, but I can't imagine making that sort of decision. I don't really like anything here. I have no interest in CJ. Not at that price. Dame, 8200 on FanDuel, 8300 on DK. I don't mind having him in a lineup or two, but it's it's not a great spot. 103.5 implied total, mid-tier. Um, it's going to take some extra news to see this. Only guy I do really want to take a look at would be Aminu on DK, which is pretty traditional for me. He needs like 26 or so. Um, he gets there pretty regularly. He has the ability to shoot the ball. Um, it's not the worst matchup for him, but that price is just a little bit too low on uh, on DK. I wouldn't want him on FanDuel. Um, Nurkic, uh, not really for me tonight. He would need. He's at sixty six hundred on DK. You know, call it 40. Had a couple 40-point games recently. Been over 30 in most. I guess I can't totally ignore him. But, you know, he's, he's, not, he's not really there for me. <sighs> Grizzlies, Pelicans. Uh, Grizzlies, 104.5 implied total, which would be 12th. Only thing that's really going to be interesting about this game is the other team. Because there's going to be at least two really solid plays. Good googly moogly. The Grizzlies are atrocious. Oh my god. I don't want any Gasol... Tyreek is 8,300 on both sites. So you're looking for 40 something? 50 something? I mean, you're looking for a lot. Uh, he's been 40s or higher in almost all of his games in the past two weeks. 
he's just pretty, you know, he's, he's doing what he needs to do. He's a three for me, and even that I'm not stoked about. I just don't like having the Grizzlies. Um, I guess if you want a little bit of Jarrell Martin on FanDuel at 3,600, you could explore that, but uh, I don't know. I'd probably pass. I just get me away from this team. Pelicans, 105.5 implied total is 11th. The assumption being uh, Anthony Davis will not be playing tonight. I think you guys can guess what that means. Boogie. How much better Boogie or the rest of the team without AD on the court? That's one I haven't explored. So, AD on. AD off. So Boogie is bonkers better without having AD on the floor. Increase of 0.37 fantasy points per minute. Um, that's a pretty dramatic change. Uh, so I do want to give a little bit of a boost to Boogie. Nobody else really gets a major benefit from it, but Boogie's is dramatic. Um... Where are you hiding? So yeah, uh, I'm not telling anybody anything they don't already know, but uh, Boogie's in a great spot. 11.6 on FanDuel, 11,000 on DK is obviously a pretty healthy price tag, but I'm gonna want a bunch of Boogie. Drew Holiday is 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. Uh, I'm also going to want a healthy amount of Drew Holiday. He needs to get to 40 plus. He's where has he been? He's actually been really quiet lately. A couple bad games. I'm hoping that those extra touches will uh, get him juiced up. Eton Moore, 4,700 on Fanduel, 4,600 on DK. Needs 27. I mean, he's all over the place. 9, 15, 20, 30. That's uh, fine if you get him, but don't go crazy for him. And then my boy Rondo, who I expect to get some uh, sizable run. Um, he's a two as well. Actually, let me confirm that. I want to see if I'm crazy with my minutes projection here. Uh, Pels. And I'm at 30. Let me knock him back one. Yeah, still really good. Um, he might even be a one for me, but... Oh, scary. It's 5,300 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. You just want to fire him up. It's a really, really, really good spot for Rondo if he's going to be getting the minutes. Yeah, love it. Love it. Going to have a lot of that game. Well, from the Pelican side, at least. To the Bucks we go. Bucks hosting the Magic. 114 implied total. Second on the night. Uh, this Milwaukee team coming on strong. The Bledsoe trade has been very, very good to him. Them. Very, very good to them. Okay. So Giannis does not look horrible. Surprise, surprise. Uh... 
Um, 11-7 on FanDuel. 10-7 on DK. He's a FanDuel 3. He's a DK 2 at that price. 10-7 is crazy. He had a decent game recently too, right? Like traditional Giannis. Yeah, 64.9. 40 minutes. I like this one though for him. Uh, Middleton. Not uh, well... 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. Hmm, how am I going to do this? What's my best bet for... Oh, yeah, we want to freeze here. Or just split here. Yeah. Um, Middleton's okay on DK. Well, I'm not even close to typing Chris Middleton's name right. I wouldn't want him on FanDuel, but uh, he can be a three for me there. Bledsoe, 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. 40 plus would be a big guy for Bledsoe. He's been in and out of 25 point games and 40 point games. Um, I'm willing to bet on the 40 point game for tonight, especially at a price of 7,000. Um, but again, this is just for DK. He's a three. Honestly, he should probably be a two. No, it's a three. His partner in crime might be a two. Brogdon, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. He needs to get to 30. Um, he's been mid-20s, basically, across the board. I don't think that there's a ton of upside in him. But he's a three on either side. That's it for me there. We have uh, Orlando now. Orlando, 103.5 implied total, which is 14th. bad feeling about that copy job. Nope. I'm good. So Orlando. Nothing looking good here aside from getting to the rim. I don't really want any Aaron Gordon. I don't really want any Fournier. I think I'm fully fading the Magic. Yeah, as of right now, I don't want anybody on the Magic. I don't like their prices. Minnesota heading to Oklahoma City. 107.5 implied total is 6th. Oi. How are we looking? Oh man, those prices are terrible. Jimmy Butler, 9,700 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. He needs 50 and change. Obviously, he's there. Um, you know, a couple 50-pointers, multiple mid-40s games. Oklahoma City, tough matchup. Um, I do like the idea of him getting to the line, but, oh, man, I don't like those prices. Not to mention, they really limit the mid-range game, and that's where he sort of thrives. Um, now, Towns... 9,600 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. We want to see him get to close to 50 as well. Last three games, 40, 48, and 60. He's had a couple 60-pointers. How has... Have they played at all this year? 
How did Towns look if they did? I've played three fucking times already? Okay. Um, it's a little bit more expensive now. I might as well look at Butler while I'm here. Yeah, okay. I don't want any Jimmy Butler. I'm okay with having a little bit of Towns. Um, man, he's a three. He might even be a four on FanDuel. Wiggins, 6,400 and 6,200. You're looking for mid-30s from him. Um, he's heating up a little bit. Three games above 30 in his last five. But this is not an Andrew Wiggins game, unless he's somehow, like, the man against them. It's actually not horrible. That price is just atrocious. So I'm going to pass. I don't want anything else from Minnesota. Uh, potentially Jeff Teague can play tonight. Right now I have him in for 25 minutes, so him and Tyus Jones will be splitting time. Um, keep an eye on that news. Uh, Tyus Jones comes back into play in a big way in DK if, uh, if Teague is out. Oklahoma City. 103.5 implied total, which would be 14th. Um, nothing super interesting here. I mean, we know we know who we're looking at. There's no uh, no value or anything opened up from any injuries. At least not yet. Okay, so Russ. Whew. He's 11-1 on FanDuel, 11-4 on DK. Like him a ton. He's a two for me. I think he's in line for a big one. How has Russ been in those three games previously? He has been, oh my God, 60, 60, 60, 48, 78, 73, 60, 60, 60, 60, 56, 65. He is on a freaking heater. How the hell is this price going down? Not exceptional against Minnesota this year, though. Okay. Hmm. Minnesota doesn't tend to put people on the line. They do cause some turnovers. I'm going to stick with it. I think that... The heater that he's on, I want to focus on it. But other than that, let's look at Paul George. 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. How has he been in the, the games against OKC, or against Minnesota? Ah, he's been good. Which is weird because I don't, I don't like the profile for him or the matchup, really. He's a... He's a three. I don't expect to have a bunch of him. I don't want Mello or Adams or Ferg. I'm good. Not that much to like there. That's just a good game. Two games left now. Uh, Nuggets hosting the Hawks. Nuggets 112.25 implied total is third. I don't like that the third and first implied totals on the night are both late games. That's always a... You know, you, all of a sudden, Jokic has 40, 20, and 6 or something crazy and breaks the slate. And you wake up to crazy news like that. All right, Nuggets now. Third highest implied total. Uh, Denver, exceptional on the offensive glass. Atlanta, not a very good defensive rebounding team. Something to keep in mind. But Denver does turn the ball over a lot. They're 28th in the league in turnovers. Uh, Atlanta second, actually, in turning people over. So uh, one thing to think about there. Gary Harris is 6,700 on FanDuel and 5,900 on DK. That is um, pretty dramatic. 
So you need, let's say, 36 from Harris to have a big night. Three straight games in the mid-20s. Prior to that, a 40-pointer, a 30-pointer. So he can get there. This is a good spot for him. Um, he's a 2 for me on DK. I think he's more of a FanDuel 3. Jamal Murray, though. 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. We're looking for 30-plus. Murray has been a lot better lately. 30 points, 40 points, 50 points, 35, 33. Um, it's a good spot for Jamal Murray. Across the board, too, for me. That price is great. Um, make sure I'm in agreement. And I am. Jokic. 9,400 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Um, I like it. How good of an offensive rebounder is Jokic? Hmm, good in the past, more of a defensive rebounder though. I don't totally love the matchup for Jokic, so he's a three for me. Um, but he can very easily go bananas. I just think it's better set up for the rest of the team. Wilson Chandler, 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. You know, you're looking for 26, 27. Uh, if you want him, you don't want him a lot. He does make things fit from time to time on at small forward, but you know you could also end up with six fantasy points, and he can just be a ghost. Trey Lyles' price is finally coming to going to where it's supposed to be, which would be higher than it is. Um, just so everybody knows, that dotted line should be right. Anybody above twenty minutes should be above the dotted line. I don't know if you see that or not. Um, I don't necessarily need any Lyles and then Barton is 6,500 on FanDuel 56 on DK so you're looking for like 30s um he hasn't really been there lately his minutes are down he's played 19 in one he played 20 in another uh I'm okay with having him in a lineup but just because of the game other than that I'm good nobody everybody sort of shoots the same amount of threes on that team so it's there's no real obvious benefit. The only people that shoot a ton of corner threes are like Torrey Craig, and he doesn't play enough minutes. So now we go to Atlanta. Uh, Hawks. Not a very good basketball team. <laughs> I'm getting through this a bit faster than I thought I would for 11 games. Don't get me wrong, it's still going to be an hour long video, but. Blowing up. Okay. So Schroeder, 7,300 FanDuel, 6,800 DK. He needs like 35 plus. He's had four 30 point games in his last seven, a couple of the 20 something point games. How good is, he's like really good from like a steals perspective, right? No misremembering okay uh because of the pace of the game i'm okay with it i'm not trying to spell that with a three but nothing crazy on him um i'm not gonna look at too much at prince or Ilyasova. sova because prince would need like 30 um Anybody on the team get a lot of turnovers or steals? Not really for print. Basically, just Bazemore. But I don't like Bazemore's price. Only guy I want to look at is Collins. And he played eight minutes in the last one. So uh, I'm going to pass full stop on Collins, even though he grades out pretty decently. I don't really want any of the Hawks now that I'm looking at this. I'm good. Just shooter a little bit. 
Last game, Golden State Warriors hosting the Clippers. Uh, one place had a line out right now, and it was like Warriors minus 14, so I went with it. It's a healthy line, but, you know, if Blake's not there, the Warriors should be expected to throttle them. Uh, this is a tricky one. Very tricky. So, assuming Durant plays, he's 10-9 on FanDuel. He's 9-5 on DK. Um, he's a, a 2 for me on DraftKings. He's Kevin Durant, and he's under 10,000. Clay Thompson, 6,800 on both sites. Uh... Nothing terribly interesting for Clay, although he does take a lot more long mid range shots than people would realize. I'd call Clay more of a three. Um, I don't have a lot of interest in Draymond there. And then Curry, 10 5 on FanDuel, 10 8 on DK. I don't trust it. I mean, they should blow them out of the water. And you need Curry to get to, like, 60. Which, you know, he's Curry. He can do that. But you need him to be on the floor. And he could very easily not play the fourth quarter of this game. So I'm just going to say Durant and Clay for me. And then we'll take a look at the Clippers and close this out. Clippers implied total isn't bad. It's mid-tier. What was it? 106, which would be tied for 8th. I mean, that's not horrible, but right now, no Blake, no Austin Rivers. I feel like I'm missing somebody else. Taya Dosic is up in the air. I'm assuming he's in. Um, but what we want to look at now would be... Lou Will is 7,900 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK. You know, you're looking for 48 or so. Gotta like it. You've got to stay on the court. Um, price isn't horrible, but he's still just a three for me. Uh, DeAndre, 8,700. What's sort of his profile against the Warriors? They just played and he played like garbage. Okay, normally he plays like garbage. How much better was Lou Will? My memory is just garbage. Garbage across the board. Oh, God. Even he's terrible. Everybody's terrible against the Warriors. Okay, I don't want DeAndre. I don't want CJ Williams. I don't... Well... TJ Williams on DK at 3,900 is not the worst thing in the world. Don't take him on FanDuel at 4,400, though. Wesley Johnson at FanDuel is probably okay. I mean, I would probably take Taya Dosich if I knew he was going to play. He's a uh, FanDuel... F oh, God damn. FanDuel 4. DK 3. And that's it. We are done. So. Here's the short list, which is uh, not that short. What I'm going to do to make this... A little bit easier to see. People can pause this if they need to. Um, first one I'm going to do is FanDuel. So FanDuel is going to be right here. That's my uh, my short list, you'll get most if you need to pause the video to see this. Um, 
that's just about everybody and I'll scroll a little bit if you want to catch those bottom uh, guys that are in the four spot but that's everything for FanDuel and then same scenario this is everything for DraftKings I'm gonna have to parse down those the the two list guys like uh, Justin Holiday and Ellington are probably gonna get the boot All right, now let's throw this into the optimizer and see what gets spit out. Then I need to hustle. All right, first up, DK. Ton of white side, ton of Levert, full exposure to Karis Levert, which makes me happy. Ton of white side, ton of Joe Harris, which I don't love because he's Joe Harris. Jokic, Rondo, Murray. I might have to take a deeper look at Jokic at this point. Um, Markinen, John Collins, I, I'm going to disregard. Uh, you can't trust the minutes right now. Brogdon, Teo, Dinwiddie, Miritich, Bledsoe. That all looks great. Number one lineup. Rondo, Mitchell, Harris, Collins. Uh, let's, where's the first one without Collins? Rondo, Bledsoe, Levert, Markinen, Whiteside, Brogdon. Will Barton and Jokic? That's, that's interesting. I'd probably go a different direction than Will Barton, but some good stuff. Check out FanDuel now. This one should be a little bit more interesting. Yeah, six is fine. We get full on Rondo and Joe Harris, ton of Mitchell, ton of Westbrook, Markin and Sabonis, Boogie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a pretty good seven person core there. Um, all of the Fandle one looks like it makes the most sense. Westbrook, Rondo, Mitchell, Ellington, Eton Moore, Harris, Sabonis, Markin, and Boogie. Seven of the ten lineups go to Boogie. That makes perfect sense to me. Looks great. Um, yeah, all of that looks pretty normal to me, too. All right, people. That is it. Um, I will be back tonight, 6 o'clock, live before lock. Should be a big one. Um, with all these games, there's always crazy news and stuff coming in. So highly recommend showing up for that. But, you know, like the video, subscribe if you want. Patre check out my website. Uh, where there's, that's where all the projections will be. You know, Patreon and Twitter, or Patreon, PayPal, Venmo. You know, if you like the job that I'm doing and want to help out, I'd appreciate that. Not necessary, though. Um, and good luck tonight. Bye, guys.